Come with me to John, the sixth chapter. Our foundational text is found in John 6 chapter, the 57th verse. It reads, as the living father has sent me and I live by the father or I live because of the father or I live through the father. So he that eateth me or he that take me for his food or he that is being nourished by me, even so he shall live by me. So we are looking at Jesus Christ as an example, how he lived his life through the Father and how we are to use him as an example and to allow him to live his life through us. Let's go over here to Galatians 2.20. Remember now, as Christ's life is hid in God in heaven, our life is hid with Christ in God. So see, as Christ go, we go. As Christ went through the Father, and as the Father ministered to him, it was God in Christ doing what? Doing the work. So we want to get to the place where we know that it is Christ in us that's doing the work, and we don't even take an account of it because this is the life that we live. So as Christ's life was a life hidden in God in heaven, so must ours be. As in heaven, so in earth. When Jesus emptied himself of his divine glory. He became a man. He put aside the free use of his divine attributes. And as a man, he lived by what? By faith. By faith and dependent on the heavenly father. He learned or he needed to wait on the father for such communication of wisdom and things to do, impartations. All of that was done through the spirit of God. He did it by faith, but he waited to hear from the Father through the operations of the Holy Ghost. So it was not just a life of faith, it was also a life of power. There is a divine enablement and a human responsibility. God will not never, never, never tell you to do something that he hadn't done already or he's gone before us and paved the way. So there are very various diversities of ministry you have ministers ministering on living a victorious life in Christ you have ministers ministering on different aspects but if I remember our main goal was to get spirit-filled believers prepared for the what the rapture and the only way you go in the rapture you got to be in Christ full life in Christ so that's basically what we are here to minister Galatians 2.20. I am crucified with Christ. I have been crucified with Christ. A past act having present results. If you've been crucified with Christ, you've also been risen. You've been raised with him. If you have been raised with Christ, you seek those things that are above. Not things here on the earth. For you are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. So we're looking at a full life in Christ. Christ as our example in his life through the Father. We're going to look at our life in Christ's life through the Father. Or even over there in John 17 chapter, the 21st verse, that we may be one. All of us, all believers may be one just as Jesus is one with the Father and the Father is one with the Lord Jesus Christ, that we all may be one in them, that the world may believe that he was sent. We are representations of, of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are created in his image and his likeness. We resemble him. And every time you fellowship with him, that image is being renewed. It's growing up. You're growing up and developing more into Christ's likeness. And so this is what we're looking at. So he says, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh is the life that you can see. This is the life that's visible to you, the life that I now live in the flesh. But now, that life that I live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. The faith of the Son of God pouring forth from me or my fellowship with him or Christ in me, you can't see that. It's a hidden life. So then the manifestation of what's in me that live in union with the Lord Jesus Christ is what you're supposed to see. The manifestation that takes place inside of me makes itself visible because it's manifested. If it's manifested, it becomes visible for all to see. Now, that's what Jesus going to judge you on. How did you promote him? Every time you have the opportunity to minister to somebody, do that. 
You are actually doing the work of the ministry, and then you are allowing Jesus Christ to use your vessel for his benefit. So we see that we live that life by faith. Christ's life in and through the Father is the image and the measure of what our life in and through the Son can be. So when you look at Christ's life in and through the Father, it's the same image and measure of what our life should be in and through Christ. You got to remember that. You got an example. You're not just here on this earth to bring forth your plan, your purpose, and your pursuit. That's not what you was created for. Because this is a life that's, uh, that's not really real. You don't want to get caught up in that. So the outward likeness can only be a manifestation of a living inward union. It is a life, the life that we now live, we live by whose faith? The faith of the Son of God. He is the originator of that faith, and he is the finisher of that faith. He completes it. So our life must be hid in Christ, hid with Christ in God. What you want to do, you want to encourage yourself in this. What you mean? When you feel like you're getting down and out, when you feel like you need to be knocked out, you start encouraging yourself in the Lord. I'm created in the image and likeness of God. Wait now, I'm dead. I've been crucified with Christ. Now I'm raised with it. In what? In newness of life. You are making affirmations. You are making statements of spiritual truths, of spiritual reality. The more you talk it, the more it settles and rests in your heart. And the more it'll talk to you. You got to confess who you are in Christ. You cannot leave that undone. So then Christ calls us to a life of faith and dependence because it's the life that he himself led. As many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. What's leading us? Whatever you're saying out of your mouth is coming out of your heart and that's what leads you. That's what causes you to think the way you think. So you renew your mind to the things of God. Renew that spirit of your mind, your attitude, your disposition to change like him. Jesus Christ had tried and he proved that a life of faith is a blessing. To not to be anxious about nothing, but to trust the Lord Jesus Christ and his word. That's a blessing. You learn how to rest upon the scripture verse and the assurance that he said we can live through him because of him and by him. He is the author of life. You feed on him. Now, he said that you got to feed on him in order to do that. You can't be making, grabbing stuff out of the Bible and saying it if you're not doing what it says to do. Remember now, the just shall live by faith. Faith does not have any value unless it's been what? Tried. Let's go to 1 Peter, first chapter. Look at verse 7. That the trial of your faith. So faith goes on trial. Well, I'm believing the Lord. Oh, you are? Well, let's just let that faith go on trial and see what you really believe in. Now, the purpose of the trial is to bring your faith in perfection so that God can work with it so it can come to pass for whatever you're believing to receive. It's not that you believe in wrong. God just wants to kind of like clean your faith up so it can be presented to him. So then the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perish. You mean... My faith goes on trial. It's more precious than gold. Uh Uh-huh. Well, why you go stumble at the word? When you say, oh, no, the just shall live by faith. Lord, I'm not moving. Your word said the just shall live by faith. You know how many times I said that during the day? As many times as I needed to say it. The just shall live by faith. You can't live by what you see and how you feel. Get up. Move. Encourage yourself in the Lord. Don't let them heaviness come on you. Don't let none of that dumb stuff come over you and try to overtake you. Amen. You got to get excited for the Lord. When something come against you, it's giving you an opportunity to say what? The just shall live by faith. Not what they see, not how they feel, nor what they think, but what the words say. So he said that the trial of your faith be much more precious than that of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto the praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ when the rapture take place. Will he find faith on the earth? The just shall live by faith. Let's come over here to James, first chapter. Now you got to ask yourself this. When things come against you, do you count it all joy? Or do you get just as mad as the other person? Or you just get bent out of shape and want to tell them a piece of your mind? Or do you say, huh, I live by faith. The Bible already told me. When this stuff comes to me, when all this diverse, different kind of stuff come against me, to count it all joy. James 1 and 2. 
My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into a diverse temptation. Knowing this. Now, see, this is why you can count it all joy. That the trying, your faith going on trial, is what? Working for you. Working what? Working patience. Now, what else works patience? According to the scriptures. And the congregation said, ah, tribulation. Tribulation. Stuff that Christians don't like. Tribulation worketh patience. What is patience? The ability to endure without murmuring and complaining. And the only way you can endure is by seeing him who is what? Invisible. You got your eye on Jesus. Everything around you falling down. Let it fall, let it fall. My eye is still on Jesus. Now, if you don't develop that concept through the word, now we're talking about faith and the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus lived a life of faith, Christ's life of faith, and dependence on the Father, just like it was Christ's life of divine power, that your faith may stand in the power of God and not man. You don't give no man no glory for nothing. You say, oh, thank you, Jesus. Don't care how much he think, well, I did this for you. I know, yeah, you did this for me. But see, if God had never moved on you, you would have never done it. Give you an opportunity to use the word of God. Every chance you get, take that opportunity. That's what's called redeeming the time for the days of evil. Every opportunity you get, you bring forth the word of God. Well, what if they don't receive it? Well, that's not what you want to hear. Well done, that good and faithful servant. Jesus is willing now to live over again his life in us to teach us also to live in no other way. See, if you allow Jesus to live in and through you, you, ooh, you wouldn't want no other way. No lack, every need met, because you gave yourself up entirely unto him. He knew that the Father was his life, that he lived through the Father, and that the Father supplied his needs moment by moment. Now, that's an assurance of faith that we should have. God did not make you to be anxious and concerned and worried about things and how this going to be and what that going to be. Over in John 17 and 18, he said, Father, as you sent me into the world, I don't send them into the world. What seemed like to me, if he sent us on a mission, that he's supposed to take care of us. If he sent you and you go, he takes care of you. Your life is taken care of. Every need is met. You have to believe that. You were sent here on a mission. You weren't just sent here to, well, you know, I was born at such and such date and I finished school and I went to college and I did this and I did that. Everything has a purpose behind it to bring forth glory to God. Everything. 